everybody. Steve Tracy live on Facebook. Welcome to Facebook Live. This is Steve Tracy. Everybody, welcome. This is my first time here, so please bear with me. Uh, after this is posted, after this is done, you can comment uh, and help me out and tell me what you liked and didn't like. And uh, so uh, welcome to this uh, first launching of Paint with Steve. Okay, uh, today is going to be a simple painting. We're going to do a horizontal painting. Uh, it's going to be a sunset through the woods. I'll show you the brushes I'm using and I'll show you the paint that I'm using. Today I'm painting in acrylic, but if you're working in, in watercolor or oil, go ahead. Um, this is going to be a, a weekly program every Monday at one for the whole family. So this will be children friendly and I want you to be able to, uh, you know, comprehend it. So we will do other classes later that are a little bit more advanced. But for the Monday classes, this will be simple and fun. So please uh, bear with me again and uh, let me show you the brushes I'm using. Okay, so I'm using these brushes. I'm using a one inch brush here. And, uh, and I'm using a number eight flat brush. I'm using a number six filbert and a one aught brush. Also, I'll be using a palette knife. This is the palette knife. And if you don't have a palette knife, you can use a piece of cardboard um, and just make sure that the edge is straight and clean. Okay, so those are my brushes. If you don't have these brushes, you can use any brushes that you have. Here's my palette. I have black, titanium white, CAD yellow, CAD red, and cobalt blue. CAD red and cobalt blue make a nice brown, so I have it over there. Okay, um, my canvas is 11 by 14, and it's a small canvas, um, and if you can paint on cardboard, you can paint on paper, uh, but this canvas is a white ground, and uh, and so we'll be covering the whole canvas with paint. Okay, so I guess we're going to get started here. I'm excited. And again, welcome everybody. So we're going to start with we're going to start with the yellow. Okay, so take your one inch brush and. I'll go, I'll try to go as slow as I can. And about two thirds of the way down, right about here, start with the yellow and go all the way across. This is a sunset painting or it could be a sunrise painting. This is a, uh, we live in the woods and so we're very, very fortunate and very blessed to be able to live in the country right now. And so when the sun comes up and when the sun sets, it shines through the forest. So here is, and I put on the paint thick. I like thick paint and I like texture. So these paintings, are all going to be the same. You can get acrylic paints at Walmart or Bijan's Art Supplies in London or any art supply store. It should be in a, a necessary service for the public at this time. Okay, so I'm going to take now a little bit of the red and the yellow and I'm mixing an orange. And that's going to go right on top of the, the yellow.
Okay. And if it gets a little bit blotchy, just take a stroke and go all the way across just to blend it and to get, get it uniform. Okay. I'm going to take, take the red. I'm going to go right into the red. Okay, we're just going to take that all the way across. Already you can see the kind of the rainbow pattern of the of the sunset. Very beautiful, very hopeful, very inspiring. Nature is never more inspiring than now, isn't it? That's probably the only activity that we can do presently is go look at nature besides watching TV and boy, don't we do that too much. Okay, so now I'm going to wash my brush. I have paper towels. And I take the brush and just squeegee or wipe the paint off in the paper towel. Okay, now I'm going to take a little bit of the white and the cobalt blue. We're making a light blue. I'm going to run that right above the red. Go all the way across. Now you see the bottom of the brush is getting getting red on it. Don't flip it. Keep that bottom of the brush hitting that red. Okay, so now that brush is contaminated. So we need to wash the brush. Wash the brush because you don't want a muddy painting. Okay, now we're going to go into that blue and take the pure blue, no white in it. Go all the way across. Okay, now we're going to just raise that one more brush width height. Go all the way across. Okay, now we're going to take a little black, mix it with the blue. Just going to paint the top of it black. Or it's blue black. Okay, going to want to work a little fast because acrylic dries very fast. If you're working in oil, you're lucky because oil doesn't dry until a couple of days. Okay. So I'm just going to get that, keep that, try to keep that. Well, you can't keep it, you can't keep it wet. But what I do to keep it wet is I'll just take a little spray bottle and just spray it once or twice just to hydrate it. So I'm going to wash my brush again. Wash it, make sure it's nice and clean. You don't want any of that blue in the brush because we're going to go back into the yellow. Okay, make sure that brush is nice and clean. Okay, we're going to go into the yellow and right where it's crossing the orange, right where the yellow is going into the orange, just do a stroke all the way across. And then go all the way back again. Okay, that's good. Now wash the brush or squeegee it. You probably just push out all the paint with the paper towel. Now go between the orange and the red and go all the way across twice. Just like that. 
Don't go into the purple. Okay, that's good. Now wash the brush. Okay, now we're going to go into where the red is hitting the blue and red and blue make purple. So we're working with the, the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. Most all colors come from that. So go right between the purple and the red. Don't go below it, don't go above it. Just go back and forth. We're just gonna blend. You see how that blends and how it looks real soft and glowy? That gives it that illusion of light. And what I call glow factor. Okay, so being very careful, we don't wanna contaminate it too much. And a little bit of streaks are okay because those could be, it could be clouds, it could be smog. Um, smog actually makes the sunset better. Um, Monet, a painter, you know, during the turn of the century, he loved to paint London in smog because it gave the, the painting an atmospheric look. So he always liked to go into London when it was real smoggy. Okay, so now we're gonna take the clean, we kind of, we cleaned our brush again, clean it again, clean your brush again. And now we're gonna go between the light blue and the, and the pure blue, do the same thing. Just blend it one or two strokes. Okay, that's good. No more than that, because we'll start to pick up other paint, another color. Okay, so now we need to clean the brush again. Cleaning the brush is very important, because if your brush is dirty, the painting is going to look muddy. So you want to make sure when you're going into other pigments that your brush is clean. So now I'm going to go between the blue and the black. And just blending, go back and forth. Don't go below that, don't go below that line. Stay right where the blue and the black meet. So we're just trying to get that nice soft edge, okay? Wipe the brush, I'm gonna wipe out all the brush. I don't want any of that black in there. I'm just gonna go in the middle here, okay? So that is basically our sunrise. Now I'm going to take the blue and the red, mix them together, and it makes brown. It's a nice brown. Okay, so I'm going to take that brown and go on the bottom. Go on the bottom. This is our foreground. If you don't have a lot of paint, then dip your brush in water to extend it. You can see where it's going a little bit purpley. That's okay. So just add more paint. Don't touch the yellow yet. We're moving up to the top. Okay, so I'm going to need a little more red. And I'm going to use the black. Because I ran out of blue. Which you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to run out of paint. If you run out of paint, a lot of times the mistake is that we will settle for a color that isn't appropriate. But in this case, it's more about the value. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little white to this color. So that's because the foreground is getting farther away. And we're just by making it lighter, we're pushing, we're creating distance. So visually, or science, I guess visually, this is farther away than that. Okay, so now we're going to add a little more white. We're going up, up to here. Now be careful you don't touch the yellow. Once you touch the yellow, then you're kind of locked into that. Don't move it around. So now we're just going to don't bring it up into the yellow too much, just where it meets. Just a little bit there. Okay. There we go. Just be slow. 
Don't go up into the yellow. Stay right below that line. And that's it. Okay, isn't that pretty just like that? Okay. Now, what I do is I'm going to take my palette knife. This is my palette knife. And I'm going to... I need another plate. I have an assistant here. My, my, my assistant here is my lovely wife, Gertrude, and she's helping me. So she's going to give me, she gave me another plate. And this other plate, I'm going to put the plate upside down because it doesn't have an edge. And I don't mean to introduce something new to you if you don't have this handy. But so I'm taking the palette knife and I'm taking the black. We're going to make the trees. And I'm just picking up some paint on one edge. So you take the palette knife and kind of on one edge, just scrape the black up. You could do that with a piece of cardboard also. You don't have a palette knife. And we're going to just take this. We're going to just create a tree trunk. As we're doing this tree trunk going up, we want to get thinner and thinner. See how the tree trunk is getting thinner and thinner? Okay, so that, that's because the higher it gets, the younger the tree is. And you can rev that down, run that palette knife down like that. So take the palette knife again. And let's try to do that. Let's do another one like this. Run it down. Start pressing the whole palette knife in. And it's okay if you get a little, little, little yellow on it. Little yellow. Say that fast five times. It's okay if you get a little yellow on it. If you've just joined us, welcome to this newly posted Facebook Live Paint with Steve. And please tell your friends about it. That will help us out. Here's a couple of trees. I'm going to do another, another tree. Do it uneven. Not all trees are the same width. My son is going to go right about here. So I won't, I won't do a tree there. I'm going to do another tree right over here. Okay, we're going to go up. Going to do another tree over here. Maybe this tree is going to be a little bent. You know, some trees get blown up by the wind. And... You know, in this day and age, it's good to be flexible because the wind is blowing and it's good to be able to bend with the wind. Someone asked me, you know, how do you deal with the problem? Well, you find a way around it. And if you're a tree in a wind, you want to be able to be flexible. Let's do another tree right here. Let's do a bigger tree. So you see where I'm, I'm adding more paint to my palette. Okay, so I do another tree. And let's do one, one fatter tree. It's good to have variety. And it's okay if it's a little lumpy because the neat thing about God's creation is that nothing's perfect. Everything's a little bit lumpy and, and, and not perfect, but altogether it's beautiful. Okay, so we're doing a thin, thin tree over here. Remember that painter, Bob Ross, he would go, Happy trees, happy trees, happy trees. Okay, so we're going to do another tree here. Maybe this tree, we only have coming up like that. This one, let's do, let's go ahead and take it all the way over. 
Now this is where probably I might be a little bit faster than you, but it's a very simple stroke. It's all the same stroke for each tree. Um, don't change your strokes until all the trees are done. They're all, it's gonna be going up and down, up and down. Okay, so I'm going to take this a little bit faster, isn't it? That's a lot faster. Okay. I put a tree over here on the right hand side. Okay. Now we're going to do, well, let's see here. Am I good enough with the trees? Let's put another, let's put another tree here. Crossing over. And I always end up putting more things in my paintings than sometimes I should. But I do like, I do like the forest and I like, I like a lot of trees. I don't know why. I think we, the earth doesn't have enough trees. Don't you agree? <laughs> okay, so now we're ready to do branches. And branches are the same way, but just smaller. So they're just go like this sideways. We go diagonally, not, not quite sideways. You could have a few sideways. And fill that in. Okay, so we said our sun is going to go there, right? Okay, so don't put anything where the sun is going to be. The sun stands alone. But it's going to be involved with the tree branches later. We're going to put other tree branches there. But those tree branches are going to be lit by the sun color, which is more like brown. Okay, so we're going to do a little branch that goes like this. A little branch that goes like this. I like them better, I think, if, they, if they're going up rather than sideways. Okay. Now, the neat thing about this is that once you get started, you can definitely take your time and just fill it in with smaller and smaller little branches. And when you have these littler branches, they add what I would say is a delicate look to it. Okay, I think I'm ready to work on the sun here. So, if you if you just joined, uh, welcome. This is posted on Facebook page of Steve Tracy Gallery, and don't forget to post your friends. If you're able to refer back to the painting, I'll it'll stay on Facebook for a few weeks. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to take a little bit of the whites and the yellow. And I am, you could use, I'll, I could use a brush. I'll use my filbert brush. Take the white and the yellow. And this is going to be the sun. Coming through. And I don't like to have perfect circles. So I make it a little bit unperfect. Okay, I'm going to take the yellow. Go around here. You don't want to go below into the purple. Okay. Then I'm going to take I'm going to take a pure white and just put that right in the middle. Okay. So that's the the burning core 
of the sun, the red hot nuclear core of the sun. Okay, now, now we're going to do some branches going over the sun area, and those branches are going to be red, red with a little bit of black to get a, a warm color, kind of a burgundy, add a little more red. And we're going to take some of these branches and where it crosses over on the sun, we're just going to keep them, we want them to be warm where they're crossing over the sun. We're going right next to the sun. Okay. And we'll do another cut, another just a few more branches here. Okay, now let's go back into our our block and connect those warm branches to the ground or to the to a tree. Okay. I'm going to go up, and it's okay if it's imperfect. Okay, then like that. Go up. Go up. And then this one's going to go down. And this one's going to go down. You know how branches are kind of spindly and they're cut, some branches are broken, some branches have little knobs on them. Well, that's why if, if it looks imperfect, it looks more natural. Okay, so we're going to take this branch over here and across over here. Okay, so I'm going to take some more of this black. Keep it nice and dark. And I think I'm just going to put in a few more small trees. Okay. Maybe a small one over here. That's a nice little friend to the big one. Little buddy. Now, our friends up in Huntsville have a little buddy. And that's their parakeet. We all have a little buddy. It's a good time to have a little buddy in this time, this day and age. I'll be your little buddy. How about that? Okay. So as the trees are going up, they get more, they get more branches. More branches. And right now the leaves haven't come out yet, have they? So it's still the season of, of sticks, as my buddy says. But we're almost going into the season of summer, which is really fun, really beautiful. I love summer. We have a wonderful garden. And my friend Margaret and her husband Lauren, they have a beautiful garden. And she gave me some hydrangeas that are going to bloom this year. I'm so looking forward to it. Now, yeah, just a few more branches over here. Take some off the edge here. Now you, you work with what you got, right? And in this time, what we're going through, we got to work with what we got. So you see where the lumps are here on some of these branches? That would be a good place to put a branch to put to put a branch coming off of a lump. You know what they say when you got too many lemons, right? You dance. No, you make lemonade. <laughs> okay. So I think we got a nice looking forest. 
If you have any questions, I'll be able to answer them a little later on today after the video is posted. Again, thank everybody for sharing this video. Tag us in the comments and send to your friends. And if you haven't already liked us on Facebook, take a moment and like our Facebook page. This will help keep you updated for our next live Paint with Steve. Okay, now I'm going to do some foreground foliage. So I'm going to take some red and black. And so those of you who have taken classes before from me know that it's very important to have a white shape. And in this day and age, that white shape couldn't be more important than the sun. So I hope all of you find, find your sun. Okay, here we go for the foliage. Just little branches. Now take, take the palette knife, or we could take even the brush. And I'll take my brush because most of you probably have brushes. We're going to dip the brush. The brush is going to be our. The brush is going to be what we're going to make our, our bushes out of. So just little taps. Little taps and little filters of, of leaves. It's coming up into the purple here. You could even do a couple of those in here. So these are some of the leaves that didn't that didn't blow away during the winter. Little leaves. These were the tough leaves. These are the leaves that were extra strong. These are the kind of leaves that we want to be today. We want to be extra strong. Yeah, so just take those little leaves, little little leaves coming up. You know, in our forest, we have these trees called beech trees. And for some reason, God lets their leaves stay on the, the plant all winter long. And they're a light, a light beige. But in a sunset sitting like this, they're going to be in shadow, so they're going to be dark. But they stay on the leaves, stay on the, the bushes all winter and they just kind of remind you that they're still there so these could be little beach beach leaves yeah so we're just doing little beach leaves here okay and we're taking this down there taking this is like little plants happy plants happy plants just little plants this is where all the little birds go in when they go hiding or they look for little worms and little grubs and little seeds. They like the little leaves, especially in the wintertime because it shelters them from the snowflakes. So you're just taking your brush and let your brush, you see how I'm just moving my brush, you know, spin it, twirl it. You get different shapes. See that? Different shapes, different shapes, different shapes, different shapes. Just delicate, little little baby shapes coming up in here. Yep. See how that's looking like now a little garden. You know, up in Canada here, if you don't know how to plant anything, you really, you still are going to get a garden because a lot of things grow without any help. But when you plant a garden, sometimes you got to pull out the weeds. Sometimes the weeds are pretty. They've got pretty flowers on them. Okay, I think that I'm going to put just a few little friends up here. A few little friends over here. Okay, I'm going to take my, my uh, faithful palette knife. I like palette knives lately. They they do a lot quickly. 
So I'm going to mix it in with my black. It makes a nice burnt umber. Okay, I'm going to take my palette knife, and I'm just going to drag it up in the foreground here. Drag in front of the trees. I'm just putting what I call just information. It's just information down at the bottom here. Information. Okay. Information. And I just saw something that I want to do. Okay, I'm going to take some red. And right below where the sun is, in the bushes, you see that little reddish brown? So take that little reddish brown, and right below here, just put a little brown, just around where the sun is hitting. I'm going to take some more red, take some of that reddish brown. And take your palette knife and chisel off a little piece. I'm just going to run that brown on the left-hand side of that tree trunk. So that tree trunk now is reflecting in, in the right-hand side of this tree trunk. So those are very subtle. We'll go, go ahead and do that over here, too. Do that here as well. Do a little here on the on the right hand side, and that is giving just the illusion of light hitting the trees. Okay, so I'm going to take some bright red. Okay, and let me just do another little. I don't want to block my sun. Maybe just another couple of brown, brown ones here. And that's okay. Just put a few friends in there. Put in a small friend over here. These are just really smaller shapes. I call these shapes the, the feminine shapes because they're dainty and they're, they're delicate. And they add to me a fineness to the painting when you have smaller shapes. And like my lovely wife, she adds a beauty to my life with her dainty, dainty way. <laughs> She's listening here, so I'm getting points. Well, I think that this is becoming a smashing sunset through the woods painting. Just a few more reflections here. And while we're at it, the neat thing about painting is that you can discover while you're painting things that you want to do. So I'm just putting a few of those ref reflectors up there. Little sparkles, sparkles of happiness, sparkles of happiness. I love painting because to me, painting is, it really is escaping. And, you know, sometimes it's good to escape. Okay, maybe just a few more of those guys, and maybe just one real thin one. I think it's beautiful. Of course, I did it, so everything I do is beautiful. Well, everybody, thank you for being here today. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch me Steve, paint with Steve live on Facebook. Please join me next week at one o'clock. You can take this painting 
uh, the painting that you did and work on it the rest of the afternoon. And uh, please comment, tell me what you thought about this uh, exercise. And I hope you got something.